G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another Brownlow related video. Obviously the Brownlow medal count is taking place on Monday night, which means it's time to get in all of our predictions. Obviously earlier this week, I did release my predicted top 10 and my predicted winner as well. So if you haven't checked that out, by all means go and do that. It was uploaded two days ago now. But today's video, I'm having a bit of a slightly different look and I'm gonna be looking at all 18 clubs in alphabetical order and trying to predict who is going to be the best vote getter for each club. Like I suggested in the previous video, these Brownlow predictions are hard unless you've been really uh, paying attention throughout the entire year to every single game. So if you haven't been keeping track with your Excel spreadsheet throughout the entire season, and even if you did, you're probably going to have no idea exactly how the votes are going to go down. So this is tricky. I've done my best to use, you know, as much of, you know, stats from Footy Wire and my own memory, and of course some of the uh, different Brownlow predictors that are going online at the moment. There's a bunch. And through collaboration of all of those different things, I have come up with my predictions for all 18 clubs and their best Brownlow vote winner. Before I crack into it, if you do me a favor, if you are enjoying the content and you haven't subscribed already, you would be doing me a huge favor trying to grow the channel and this time of year is really important for that sort of things. So if you are not currently subscribed and you would like to be, please consider doing so with the button below. It's completely free. All right, like I said, we're gonna run through all 18 teams and uh, it's gonna be alphabetical. So I'm gonna start with the Adelaide Crows and naturally I'm going to mention some of the players that I've already mentioned in my top 10. And one of those is Jordan Dawson who had a fantastic first year as captain and obviously moved into the midfield this year with pretty good success, averaging 27 uh, possessions per game and four clearances. He had a number of memorable BOG performances this year, including the showdown medal later in the year and uh, played really well in some of Adelaide's losses as well. And I think this one is a pretty safe bet. You'd probably think Laird is the next biggest threat, but Dawson's tip to probably go top five, if not top 10. So Jordan Dawson for the Crows is a pretty easy home run. Then you got the Brisbane Lions. And this one, again, I think is probably almost the safest bet of all 18 teams. I'm going to talk about Lockie Neal should be their highest vote winner. Obviously, I, uh, I won't spoil it exactly if you haven't seen the video, but I've tipped him to go pretty high in the Brownlow medal. And uh, there has been a distinct lack of uh, competition, I guess, from other Brisbane midfielders this year. And I think it's AFL.com has Charlie Cameron as their second best vote winner, um, far below Lucky Neal. And another one, I think, had Josh Dunkley as well. So if I had to predict, I'd say Lucky Neal is far and away the biggest Brownlow vote getter for the Brisbane Lions, followed by Josh Dunkley. But Lucky Neal is a serious chance to win it. Then you've got the Carlton Footy Club, and uh, obviously they have the reigning winner in Patrick Cripps. Now, that would be the safe bet, but I'm going to throw my first curveball into this video, and I'll say Charlie Kern. No, I think Cripps will pull a little bit. Obviously, he hasn't been quite to the same standard that he was last year, but I think Charlie Kerno is going to have enough three-vote games this year. He had uh, a bag of nine and a bag of ten, so that's six votes against West Coast. He's also had two other bags of six this year and another one of five. Uh, the Brownlow predictor has Cripps with 19 votes and Kerno with 17. Last year, Kerno polled 11 votes. So I'm expecting him to improve dramatically on that. So I reckon a 17 or 18-vote season is about right for Kerno, and he's averaging more goals, disposals, and marks this year as well. So more likely to get votes this year. And therefore, he's my rough tip for Carlton. Then we've got Collingwood. This one's another slam dunk, actually. It is Nick Dacos, who obviously is going to be a huge chance to win the Brownlow medal and uh, a safe bet to be Collingwood's biggest vote getter. Obviously, he had uh, well, he had seven games this year with more than 35 disposals. Started the year in the first six games was averaging 37 and a goal. Obviously, missed a little bit of football. I think his biggest threat may actually be his younger, uh, older brother, sorry, Josh Dacos. Uh, but other than that, Nick Dacos is a pretty safe bet despite only playing 19 proper games this year. The 20th game, he was injured. Then you've got the Essendon Footy Club and Zach Merritt is my tip. And, you know, a pretty good chance to finish, you know, eighth or around that mark, to be honest. And I think there is another bit of a lack of competition here for Essendon. Maybe Darcy Parrish is the next biggest contender, but he's projected to get around 20 votes. Merritt, which will put him around the mark for top 20. Uh, this year had plenty of over 30 disposal games, played really well uh, in both wins and losses, actually, this year for Essendon. Wonderfully consistent player. He also played four extra games over Parrish as well. So I think this one is a pretty safe bet Zach Merritt for Essendon. Then the Fremantle Football Club, it's almost certainly going to be Caleb Sarong, in my opinion. Andy Brayshaw is probably the next biggest threat, although uh, I've said in previous videos, I think Sarong really lifted a gear this year and Brayshaw kind of stagnated. Maybe that's a little bit harsh, but he was the MVP last year and obviously finished high in the Brownlow. But I don't think he's going to be stealing too many votes from Sarong this year, who had a really, uh, I guess you could say breakout. He was already a good player. But he was wonderful at the coalface this year for Fremantle. Obviously won an All-Australian jacket as well and was ranked fourth in total clearances and disposals per game. Those guys at the coalface get plenty of umpire attention in terms of votes. So I think Sarong will poll well and, you know, be a chance for top five for sure. 
Then you've got the Geelong Footy Club. This one was more of the, one of the more murky ones. I've decided to lock in Jeremy Cameron because you know he's had a, a terrific start to the year in particular. We're talking about him as the game's best player in that first couple of months of the season. Tom Stewart's probably his biggest threat, even though you know Stewart's a defender and Cameron's a forward, admittedly. But Cameron had so many explosive big performances, uh, particularly early in the year. He had 27 goals after six rounds in, in round two against Carlton. He had 25 and six goals. He had multiple bags of seven, if I'm not mistaken, as well. At least one seven goal haul. I think it was against Collingwood in that loss. Um, and his start of the season, he's projected to get 10 votes in the first six rounds. So I don't see anyone at Geelong catching Jeremy Cameron. Then there's the Gold Coast Suns. And in the absence of Took Miller, who would probably be a Brownlow contender naturally, as he was last year, I'm going to go with Noah Anderson. Obviously, Miller lost a, missed a lot of football this year. Raul is probably the next biggest contender, but I think there's a fair gap in terms of their performances this year. He had a career best season this year, Anderson. Polled 14 votes last year, and I think he's gone up a gear this year. So if he polls like 16 plus, us, then he should comfortably be Gold Coast best vote getter and he did play every game as well. I mentioned as well between rounds six to eight he's tipped to go three votes three times in a row so Anderson for the Gold Coast Suns that should be a safe bet. Okay, guys, before we continue with the rest of the video, I do have an important message to share with you. As you'd know, this year, True Footy has started working with the fantasy platform called Game Day Squad. And on behalf of Game Day Squad, I have something pretty awesome to share with you. And that is, if you haven't already, that they have just launched for AFLW. That means you can start fresh with a new squad and team and, again, win weekly prizes. This is your chance to get ahead of the game and make a team for the start of the brand new season. So make sure you follow the link in the description to both creating a team on Game Day Squad and signing up to the True Footy League, which is, of course, completely free. Let's transform women's fantasy Aussie rules into a sensational reality. Then it's GWS, and this one is surprisingly tough as well, actually. I'm uh, canvassing a few different predictors. They've got a number of different ideas of who could be the leading vote getter. I'm going to go with Tom Green because he had a wonderfully a prolific season, obviously ineligible for the Brownlow medal, but he had a really consistent year, still only missed the two games and ranked first for disposals per game with a crazy average of 32. He had five tackles and six clearances a game as well. So his real high volume of uh, possessions and the fact that the Giants obviously have done pretty well in the second half of the year mean that he will be a good chance and his biggest contenders will be Toby Green and Stephen Cornelio. Both of those guys should poll pretty well, but I'm going to pick a name out of the hat almost and go with the most prolific midfielder of the three in Tom Green. So that's my bet. Then with the Hawthorne Footy Club, I've gone for another roughie here. I think that the, a lot of people are suggesting it'll be Jai Newcomb, but I'm going to go with James Sicily. Again, probably an illogical call because he's a defender and I'll probably get it wrong. But, uh, you know, the amount of possessions and marks this guy got, it'll be impossible for him to ignore. And he was unmistakably the best player in, in some of those Hawthorne wins as well. An average of 10 marks a game was insane. He's uh, ranked first in the league for marks and second in the league for intercept per game. He was suspended for three games as well. And obviously, Obviously, having played 19 games, maybe that's what gives Newcomb the edge here, but I'm going to go for James Sicily as a roughie. Then the Melbourne Football Club, I've got Christian Petrarca. Uh, it's an interesting year where Clayton Oliver, you know, they notoriously still votes off each other in the last few years, and Clayton Oliver missed a large chunk of the middle of the season with that hamstring injury. Um, probably going to be Jack Viney as the biggest contender Petrarca, and what will work against Petrarca is a definite shift forward towards the back end of this season. But he obviously had a terrific year, number one player for score involvements and inside 50s, and was obviously picked in the Australian team. So I think he's around this mark. I think he'll get recognized with votes, but not high enough to seriously be a chance to get the actual medal. Then we've got North Melbourne, and this one is really tough because I think there's one player that stands out as a genuine Brownlow chance if he gets through an entire season, and that's Luke Davies Uniac, and he only played 14 games this year, but I'll still back him in to get the most votes because I saw some genuine three vote performances this year. His biggest contenders will probably be Nick Larkey, who obviously kicked uh, multiple bags of uh, five and six this year. History shows, obviously, when you're a for the bags five or six. That's what it takes to get votes. And Larky did that a fair bit this year. And there's also Harry Sheasel who won their best and fairest, uh, who had a terrifically consistent season. But one thing I'll note is that AFL.com had him first for North with 10 votes, but they only gave him one vote against West Coast in round one. And naturally I watched that game closely and I thought LDU was the best player on the field. So I think there's upside there. So I'll double down and I think Luke Davis Uniac will get the most votes for North Melbourne, despite playing 14 games. That's crazy. Then we got Port Adelaide. Your two biggest contenders will be Butters and Rosie, but I'm going to go with Butters, who, you know, was probably just slightly better and probably had more game-breaking performances where he was clearly the best first or second uh, player on the field. Much has been said of that, uh, you know, middle stretch of the season and he's tipped to get 17 of a possible 21 votes throughout the middle of the year and that potential to get genuine three-vote 
performances as well. We'll put him ahead of Rosie, who I think will finish around the 20 mark, but I think Butters has a real chance of actually winning the medal. Then you've got Richmond, and this one will probably be a bit of a shock if it doesn't happen, but naturally I'm going to tip Tim Taranto to be the biggest vote getter for Richmond. Uh, aside from like a great year personally, there's a distinct lack of midfield competition for him in terms of votes. You've probably got Dusty Martin or Shy Bolton really as the next competitor, but he had his most prolific season yet at AFL level with 29 touches. Keep 19 goals as well, so hitting the scoreboard will help him. He also had that real purple patch similar to Butters. He's tipped to get 17 out of a possible 21 across seven rounds there, and Richmond won six of those seven games as well, which will help. Richmond losing more games than they won this year means I don't think he will get that close to winning, but he'll certainly, well, I think he'll be in the top 10 and he'll certainly be Richmond's best vote getter. Then we got the St Kilda Footy Club, and I think the clear choice here is their halfback flanker, Jack Sinclair, who enjoyed a wonderful season. I really enjoyed the season that Sinclair put in this year and uh, was unfortunately snubbed from my top 10 in that other video. Again, I said I wouldn't spoil it, but Jack Sinclair, clear best vote getter. He's tipped by AFL.com to get uh, 24 votes as well, which is a very, very strong ranking, but we'll put him close to the top 10. And Rowan Marshall will probably feature as the next highest. He's had a terrific season and, you know, could have justifiably been a second ruck in the All-Australian team this year. But Sinclair was first in effective disposals this year. He had kicked the ball more than anyone else as well. And he had some big performances in wins for them over the Cats, Giants, Dogs, and Richmond. So we'll accumulate some three vote wins there. Safe bet, Jack Sinclair will be at the most votes for St Kilda. Now we're down to the Sydney Swans and uh, I have this guy going pretty high in the count and it will be Errol Goulden who gets the most for the Swans with the next biggest challenger, maybe Chad Warner. But, uh, you know, Errol Goulden had an amazing breakout season this year. Ranked first for inside 50s and meters gained and second in kicks as well. And hit the scoreboard as well, which is really, really good for a midfielder. Hitting the scoreboard, showing that versatility. Uh, kicked basically a goal a game with 22 this year. I think Errol Goulden is a safe bet, to be honest. He has had a terrific season. Then you've got the West Coast Eagles, who <laughs> recorded their worst ever season in terms of Brownlow votes last season. I think they will beat that this year, looking at the numbers. But their biggest vote getter will be Tim Kelly, very safely. The fact that he played 22 games almost makes him a certainty for this, let alone being you know one of our best players as well. But a whole host of Eagles didn't play enough games to really feature in Brownlow votes, let alone the fact that it wasn't a good season to begin with. But for context, like the, the player who's tipped to get the second most votes for West Coast is Luke Shuey, and he only played 10 games. And he had probably a few two or three vote performances in that as well. But yeah, it says a lot when the guy who's likely to come second for us played 10 games. But anyway, Tim Kelly has actually had a really good season. If I think if we played in a better team with some better teammates, he'd probably be closer to that All-Australian squad. I think he's, his effort level and his ability to win his own ball this year really stepped up. And, you know, simply put, we won three games this year and I have him as the three votes in two of those three games as well. So this is a no-brainer, Tim Kelly for sure. And finally, again, probably a no-brainer, the Marcus Bontempelli will get the most votes for the Western Bulldogs, probably over Tom Liberatore, who had a really good season in the midfield as well. But Bontempelli finished second of the coaches' votes this year. And this is arguably the best version of Bont I've ever seen personally. I hope he wins it, purely because a player that's as good as him deserves to have the legacy of being a Brownlow medalist. And I think he'll be right in the mix for it. It was his best ever season in terms of disposals at 27.6, seven and a half tackles, 7.6 clearances a game as well, which puts him in the top three for the comp and also hit the scoreboard as well with 19 goals. And this guy's a monster. Absolutely love watching him play. Wish him all the success. Um, and I think it's a safe bet that he gets the most votes for the Western Bulldogs. So you have it, guys. That is my predictions for all 18 clubs best vote getter. This will be interesting. Uh, I'm not really a better myself, but I think there's some juicy odds, you know, going with these markets as well, but not recommending anyone to bet if that's not your thing. Gamble responsibly if it is. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support on the channel lately, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.